Yarmo, done much earlier than you had hoped, I understand that, but go back a year ago, where you were then, where you are now, how pleased are you with how much ground you were able to make up in such a short period of time? Well, I think a year ago when we sat here, we thought that we had taken a step back, and right now I think that we can all feel, despite the results in the playoffs, that we took two steps forward, maybe three, as an organization, as a team. Um, a lot of our uh, elements to our team are young, and they're going to get better. So I, I feel strongly about this being, again, a, a great learning experience for our group and, and our team, and we'll be better next year. I give you a lot of credit because I don't know how you stay so patient. I mean, finishing 27th, and there was the real, you know, if you would have gone in, it would have made a lot of changes. People would have said, yeah, you got to make a lot of changes finishing that low. You were very patient. You didn't. You wrote it off to injuries, to guys that just had off years, and knowing that there were young guys coming. How tough is it to do in that situation when you're sitting there in that moment uh, finishing where you did last year? Well, we try to kind of emotionally detach ourselves from the situations that we faced last year. But at the same time, we spend every day with these guys, evaluating them through practices, through, through testing, through training camp, through games. Um, and it goes well beyond that, too. Some of these players we've known since they were 17 years old, before they were drafted, seeing what got them drafted and then beyond and develop. You can't just throw it away because we had eight bad games last year to start the season and kind of put ourselves behind the, uh, the eight ball there and, and, and had a season that definitely wasn't something we had planned for. Everyone on our team and even around the team with the, with the experts thought that we'd be pretty good a year ago and we weren't, but we learned from it. We came into this year and, and we were a better team and we showed everybody that we probably should have had a lot more success uh, a year ago. Uh, we got 50 wins this year, we got 108 points and went out in five games, which is, which is definitely something that um, we're going to think about all summer and hopefully that's uh, enough to add to the hunger of, of players on the individual level and then as a team that we're going into next year earning a spot in the playoffs again and, and we'll be way better when the crunch time comes and, and obviously we need to be at our best when, when it counts the most, which is the playoffs. You talk about the players taking a step and this organization took a step this year. How do you keep tracking that way? I mean, do you ask the veterans in their exit meetings to, to bring the level up or, or are you expecting the young guys again to, to push into this organization? Well, yeah, we, we've just gone through that process with the players and coaches and trainers and, and, um, and um, all of our staff to, to see what, the, what they thought of the year both on individual level and as a team, and what, what are the areas of improvement, what we can do, what they can do to make this group better. And, uh, you know, we're going to digest all that and put, put that into our summer off-season planning in the next uh, days and weeks. We still have a lot of work to do as far as evaluating um, our prospects. I'm going tomorrow to see uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois play two games. Um, Basil's going out west to see Kolasar and Turkov play against each other in the playoffs. A lot of things to digest, but, uh, but I think it's a combination of those things. I, I truly believe that we have a lot of veterans that, that uh, still at the age of 30 or, or over or above think that they can get better. And there's no reason to think, uh, not to think that way. I, I think as long as you keep playing hockey, you, get, you have to think that you can keep getting better no matter what age you are, no matter what your experience level is, I think you get stale if you think that, okay, well, I can't get any better anymore. It's probably time to hang them up. But we also have a lot of young guys that are not even close to, to being in their prime. I mean, just imagine the level where Zach Wierenski and Seth Jones can get with their improvement where they are now, and there's a few levels that they can still get up to. Uh, we have a lot of guys who've gone th uh, through so much in their career, and they're only you know, 23, 24 years old, Brandon Saad's already got two cups and, and played in the league, which seems like forever, and he's, he's very young. Um, so he's, he's going to be 24 years old this year. So it, it, there's a lot of, uh, lot of different things that go, go into the planning and, and what we think we can get to on individual level, and then what will that amount to as a team. But uh, I'm, I'm really excited about the potential of our team, of our group. You know, you saw Gabriel Carlson step into the lineup in the playoffs like he had played for, for years in the National Hockey League, playing against the, uh, the team that's um, scored the most goals in the, uh, in the regular season. He handled himself very well. Uh, Nutivara got benched, but then got back and was like an impact guy when we got him back into the lineup. Um, you know, we talked about Zach and Seth all year long. Wenberg, you know, probably wasn't at his best in the playoffs, but at the same time, he, 
he took a huge step from a year ago to this year. No reason why he can't step, take another step or two uh, going into next and years beyond. So I think there's so many different uh, elements of our team that are going to get better that it makes me excited. I'm wondering about the exit meetings. Is it, uh, were you encouraged by the way they walked into your office and the message received by you? And were there any surprises? Were there any kids that you kind of like, wow, that's, uh, that's some good comments out of the young player? Well, the thing that, that we're looking for is a good, uh, honest self-evaluation where we can feel that the guys took a look in the mirror first and there's not a finger pointing, there's, there's, there's none of that where guys are pointing fingers at, at, at uh, each other or, or somebody else. They're first looking in the mirror and saying, what can I do better to be more important for this team? How can I improve my input? and make this team better and and it was very good that way i felt that a lot of the guys and all of the guys had taken a look in the mirror honest look in the mirror and and they're first and that's the starting point we always need and um, i think we have it this team that you took to the playoffs at the trade deadline you didn't make many moves you just a couple of things to kind of fortify what you had now that you were in that series does that give you a much better idea of what you really have and what you really need to do to make it better like I said, I think you need to be at your best when it comes the most, which is the playoffs. And, and we ran into a very good team, a team that uh, very efficiently used their opportunities to uh, score and put the games away when they had them. I feel that we outchanced them in, in four out of five games, outpossessed them, you know, the, the, the um, analytics, if you want to call it, and, um, and, and played well against a really good team, but ended up losing the series four to one. You know, we, we just got to dig in deep and, and uh, you know, analyze all those things, move forward with, with uh, good learning experience and, and be better for it next year. What the regular season this year? It seemed like you had success, you had the guys go through a lot of great things, but were there any moments where you, where you thought that you know, there were some struggles and this is going to be good for us down the future? I mean, I, I well, I think the, uh, the stretch in the, uh, just before the playoffs started, we. Uh, never lost more than two games in a row all, all year in the regular season then all of a sudden we lost six in a row it's it's tough when you don't have anything really to play for we made the playoffs we pretty much solidified our spot and knew that at some point in that losing streak knew early that we weren't going to get home ice uh, sort of lost the hope of, of the president's trophy against uh, Washington we played them head to head and uh, those are tough situations. We've seen that in, in situations where we've been out of the playoffs. It's really tough to motivate the team to be at their best when you don't have any hope. Well, it was similar to that, but obviously better because we'd already made the playoffs. But um, I think there were a lot of great things about our season as far as, you know, the winning streak. There were a lot of games where it felt like it was a high pressure, uh, almost like a playoff atmosphere, the game in, uh, in Minnesota, New Year's Eve where both teams had gone through a big streak of winning and, and then who's going to keep yeah. keep the streak on and we kind of willed our way through it. Um, even the game that broke our streak in, in Washington, I thought we came out of the gate really well and, and looked like we're going to win that game and then, you know, things didn't go as planned. But, but um, you know, there were a lot of games in that streak where we just willed our way through and uh, found a way to win and, and that, that was, a uh, I think, a real good learning experience for our guys too. The consistency where we didn't lose more than two games all year, I, I thought it was great for our group to be able to always bounce back from a, from a loss and, and get back on winning ways. Um, the depth and the balance of our team, I think, was good all year. I think that we saw with the type of depth that we have on defense with these young players in our system that, that the future is really good. So a lot of positives. Last year you had a team in Cleveland, you went and watched them and you hoped that they were going to do even a glimpse of what they did, winning the whole thing. And there was players you thought maybe could come in. The situation you're in now, is there players you look to? Is there possibilities kind of in the coverage, if you will, that for next year in this organization? Yeah, uh, and you know, even to take it a little bit further, last year when we watched them in the playoffs, we were convinced that some guys are going to make our team and not only make our team, but make our team better. Did Zach Wierenski surprise us a little bit? Yeah, I think that, you know, 47 points in the regular season, your first year as a defenseman, I don't think anybody could say that, okay, that's going to happen uh, with 100% confidence. You can think that. You're probably not going to say it out loud. We thought with the way he dominated in the playoffs that he would be an impact player on our team. Josh Anderson probably uh, exceeded the expectations a little bit, but we've seen his tremendous potential all the time and kind of waited for that breakthrough. 
as said lax been keeping get, you know he keeps getting better every year Oliver Bjorkstrand we thought he'd make the type of impact right off the bat this year that he did mid uh, mid season when he came back there there are a lot of good players we we signed the free agent uh, Sam Vigneault who went into uh, Cleveland played very well uh, Justin Scott uh, Jordan Maletta uh, guys that we signed from junior free agency uh, the year before took big strides this year as, as, as far as the prospects. Uh, big strong guys down the middle um, that are going to give us good center depth and, and possibly guys will push for spots next year. Vitaly Abramov, uh, most valuable player in the Quebec League and, um, and the, the leading scorer of that league came into the American League at the end of the year and s scored more than a point a game in the games that he played was a great addition to that team and, and is an exciting player to watch. Pierre-Luc Dubois wasn't quite ready last year in, 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 in the uh, training camp, but he's been playing great now when it counts the most in the Quebec League playoffs. And, uh, you know, Turkov and, and Kolesar are playing against each other in the, uh, in the conference finals in, um, in, um, in the Western League and, and doing great. Turkov had four assists last game, Kolesar goal and assist. I think Kolesar has two points per game in the playoffs, 20 points in 10 games. And those are, those are exciting uh, things for, for the future of our organization. Kevin Stendhal is playing in the uh, Swedish League Finals right now and making an impact, had a goal and assist last game. He's a six foot four right-handed centerman. So there are a lot of good young players. The, uh, you can always project, and that's what we do every day. But at the same time, it's the mental hurdle that, that seems like is the biggest hurdle sometimes for young guys to take. And I think like Oliver Bjorkstrand, he, he had to take that mental step more than anything to be able to be a, um, a player on the NHL level consistently and, um, and make an impact here because we've, we'd seen glimpses of it then he wasn't quite ready and then he came back and now he was. And um, you know, so that, that's the hardest part to project is he mentally ready when we feel that he does have the skills, he does have the speed, strength, all those things, but here he might not quite be ready. One last thing for you, it's a unique summer because before you add players in the draft, you're gonna lose a player in the expansion draft and a, a good player, potentially a young player. How does that impact your summer? And what kind of discussions do you have to try to, uh, I don't know if you can kind of limit who you lose, but what will you do to try to control that as much as you can? Well, those kind of conversations have been going on for a while with, with George McPhee and the, uh, the Las Vegas team. So um, they're ongoing. We're going to get towards the uh, expansion draft. We'll do the best we can to, uh, to um, um, you know, we're going to lose a good player. There's no way around it. We're going to do the best we can to protect the assets we have and uh, have the best possible team on the ice for the Columbus Blue Jackets come next year. But unfortunately, we're going to lose one player, and, and there's no way around it. Yarmo, thank you very much for taking the time. Good luck on your travels, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thanks, Yarmo. That's Blue Jackets General Manager Yarmo Kekalainen. For Jody Shelley, I'm Bob McElligot here on Jackets TV, presented by Ohio Health.